What is the difference between black tie, white tie, cocktail attire, and casual open dress? How can you best communicate to your friends and family what you want them to wear for your wedding? And what if you're hosting a themed event? How can people know what diamonds and denim means or what chalet chic means if you don't take the time to educate, inform, and guide them to the right fashion choices? Hello, my friends, and welcome back. My name is Andrea Eppolito, and we are here today celebrating life, luxury, and above all else, love. As a wedding designer and a lifestyle expert, this is one of the things that comes up very often when I am sending out invitations or when I am managing guest experiences, guests will reach out to me and say, I'm not quite sure what the dress code is. I don't understand what it means and I'm looking for some guidance. So that's what we're gonna share today. But first, we are going to talk about one of my absolute favorite jewelry companies and jewelry brands, Ana Luisa, which is what I am wearing today and honestly, almost every day. I have spent years as a jewelry collector. I started my collection when I was in my early teens. My parents always gifted me jewelry and it's just something that I love. I do believe that precious metals and stones carry energy and I think that when you wear a piece, especially a piece that's close to your heart, especially a piece that's on your hand, you're carrying the memories and the meaning of those pieces with you. Now, not every day is a reason to wear fine high jewelry. And so Ana Luisa makes it very easy for you to start your jewelry collection, for you to build upon your jewelry collection with beautiful high quality pieces that start at only $39. If you've been here for a while, you know I'm I'm a gold jewelry girly and I wear big gold hoops every day. I actually normally wear medium size hoops, but these big ones are just stunning. They are my most recent upgrade. And I love them because not only are they strong, but they are humidity tested and resistant. They don't tarnish, they don't scratch, they don't fade. They are just easy to wear every day. And when you're making an investment in a piece of jewelry, whether it's $50 or $50,000, you want to know that you're going to be able to carry these pieces with you, that you're going to be able to build upon them and revisit them year after year. I travel with my jewelry. I wear it every day. You will never find me naked without jewelry. And so these are, they're big enough, they're gold and they're shiny and they will be eye-catching and get your attention. Even when, you know, for somebody like me who has a lot of hair, who's wearing it down, these are just a great piece because they still make a statement. I'm also wearing this beautiful kind of, you know, let's see if I can scooch up, really delicate A necklace. Obviously my name starts with an A, but both of my children have A names. And so the fact that I can wear this necklace, I can make it longer, I can make it shorter. It's such an easy, but really kind of sweet, delicate piece that I can put on and just go. And lastly, I wear my engagement ring and my wedding band from my husband every day. It is forever on my hand. I wear it when I travel. I wear it when I go to the gym. I wear it when I'm around the house. They're just pieces that obviously mean so much to me. But on days like today, when the jewelry has been sent off either to be appraised or to be insured, if I'm having the prongs tightened, I don't like not having something on my hand. And so this kind of very simple, clean gold band lets me put it on, lets me kind of have that feeling of having a wedding band on. And I just think it's a beautiful, elegant, very kind of old money, sophisticated way of honoring the fact that I am married, that I love my husband, and that I want my hand to represent that. Now, when my jewelry comes back, when I'm able to put my engagement ring and my wedding band back on, this is a piece that I oftentimes will switch. I'll put it on the other hand, and if I'm stacking with my diamond bands, sometimes I'll even put this between them, number one, to create more finger coverage, and number two, because it stops the diamonds from clanking up against one another, and it just kind of gives it a more visually interesting look. So I've talked about Ana Luisa here before. They are an amazing company. They ship everywhere 
domestically. And if you go down below, there is going to be a link so that you can go explore their pieces and build your jewelry collection, which you are going to need now and always, but especially during wedding season. So let's talk about what wedding season attire means, whether it's white tie, black tie, formal cocktail, casual, or themed. So we're gonna start with white tie weddings. When I say white tie, you don't hear white tie very often. I have only had it be a request one time, and during that time, the couple actually changed to black tie. Because when I say white tie, I want you to think of the Met Gala. I want you to think of Gatsby. White tie is the height of sophistication, of embellishment. For men specifically, when it comes to the tuxedo in a white tie wedding, we're talking short-waisted and tails. We're talking about a white pleated tuxedo shirt and a beautiful white bow tie. This is a place that most men, honestly today, just don't feel comfortable. They don't wanna look like penguins. They feel like the tails are too weird. And so it's something that has just not been in fashion for many, many years. I truly wish that it was because I think it is such an elegant, old world, rich look. But you really will not see white tie on an invitation. Maybe if you're going to the plaza, maybe if you're going to the White House. But other than that, what is most common and what you will see on a much more regular basis is black tie. So black tie specifically for men will always mean a tuxedo. It is a formal tuxedo. It's pants with the stripe going down the side. It's a tuxedo jacket where the lapel has a different fabrication than the rest of the suit and it will mean a bow tie. Now, my husband is somebody who doesn't feel comfortable wearing a bow tie, and so when we have black tie events, he is able to do a very kind of thick, wide, black satin tie, but still with the tuxedo pants, with the tuxedo jacket, and always with a very high gloss, high shine tuxedo shoe. For women, black tie will always mean long formal. It will always mean a very specialty fabric. So when you're thinking about black tie for women, think about fabrics like velvet, like satin, like silk. There'll be a level of embellishment, whether it's with a lace or a sequence or an applique. Black tie today is the most formal thing that we are seeing being requested of guests. It does confuse people. More than anything, it confuses men because the first thing they say is, do I have to wear a tuxedo? And the answer to that is yes. What people will do instead, when they really want to drive the point home, but they don't want men to feel like they have to go out and buy or rent a tuxedo, on the invitation, it will say instead, black tie optional. What this means is that yes, women, you still need to be in a floor length gown. Whether that is a fitted gown, a mermaid gown, or a ball gown, women are still expected to elevate the fabrication and to wear a very long silhouette. Men are greatly encouraged to wear a tuxedo with a bow tie or a black satin tie. If they don't have a tuxedo or if they're not comfortable in a tuxedo, the only other appropriate attire for a black tie optional wedding for a man would be a black suit with a white or black shirt and a black or white tie. It's very important that when you go to a black tie wedding, if you're a guest and you're showing up black tie, black tie optional, there is no color. There is no accent piece. This is when you are going to be wearing a black tuxedo or a black suit. Black tie optional, you may get men in a navy blue tuxedo, you may get men in a maroon tuxedo. I personally don't necessarily always enjoy this because one of the big pieces, one of the allure of a black tie, black tie optional wedding is that as the couple, when you get your photos back, everyone looks beautiful. Everyone looks 
put together. Everybody looks the same and there's a thread that's pulled through. And so if you're a guest who where everyone else is in black and you are wearing blue or you're wearing maroon or you have this coloration or a pattern, you will stand out in a couple's photos in a way that I don't always feel is appropriate because the focus should be on the bride and groom. And there's a very good chance that the couple is asking for black tie, black tie optional, and that the groom, if there's a groom, is going to be wearing something else. Perhaps he's walking down the aisle in a black tuxedo and then changing into more of a patterned tuxedo smoking jacket for the reception because our grooms really want to have an opportunity to stand out and tell their story as well. So if you're not going to be white tie, if you're not going to be black tie and you're not going to be black tie optional, the next thing that you will see on invitations or that you as a couple could ask for is formal cocktail attire. This opens up the floodgates quite a bit. For women, cocktail, formal, formal cocktail, any of those combinations of words. This is going to allow a woman to not necessarily have to be in a full floor length dress. This is where you're going to see dresses that are really at that knee length. So to the knee, slightly above the knee, slightly below the knee, you're not going to see as much of a heavy fabrication. In the winter, you might see a knee length strapless velvet dress with a wrap, but you're not going to see anything that is super overdone. You're not going to see the ornate sequence. You're not going to see feathers or embellishments or ruffles or shoulders or anything like that. Formal really does mean dressed up party attire. And for men, you will open up to color. You'll open up to a sports coat that could be in any type of fabrication with a pant. You'll open it up to a brown suit. You'll open it up to a gray suit to a blue or to a mixed match set. Formal and cocktail attire does mean take time, put thought in, put effort in, look festive, look special, but you don't necessarily need to be as rigid in terms of what you're wearing. I personally think that this is the type of thing you would see if you were hosting a wedding at a restaurant, if you are hosting a wedding on a vineyard, it's something you see for rooftops or alternative, you know, locations such as maybe an art gallery or something along those lines. Definitely appropriate for a country club. Whereas formal and black tie, you're definitely going to want to put that if you're having a formal hotel wedding. So anytime you're going to a Four Seasons, a Ritz-Carlton, if you're going to a place that is historical and elevated. So think about things that you would do at the Plaza, at the Rainbow Room, at Ohika Castle, or if you were in Las Vegas, imagine going to a wedding either at the Wynn or at the Bellagio. These are places that really demand and require that extra step of black tie, black tie optional, long dresses, beautiful dark tuxedos, dark suits. Whereas if you are opening it up, maybe it's a little bit of a younger couple, maybe it's a little bit more of an artsy open format wedding, you can definitely do something that says formal. What I find a lot of couples have though, is they want everyone to look really dressed up. They want them to look beautiful. They want them to look special, but they're afraid that if they put cocktail attire or formal attire, that people will dress down too much. And so instead they put black tie optional because it's a way to give the guests that little thing in the back of their head of don't be the couple that's underdressed. Don't be the couple that shows up in color. Don't be the couple that shows up, you know, for a man in a blue suit or in a gray suit. This is when you really, really want to step it up. And so the black tie optional will oftentimes get you to a really formal, beautiful look without the guest having the pressure of saying, oh my God, I have to go out and rent or buy a tuxedo. So these things are pretty easy for a guest to Google on the internet and to get an idea. 
The place where things get much more confusing is when you are going to be hosting a themed event. So as a wedding planner based in Las Vegas who travels all over the country producing weddings, what will often happen is I will be producing a series of events. So a few years back, we had a wedding in Lake Tahoe. We had multiple events over the course of five days. And so we had something where we had a kind of very upscale, festive, holiday chic event at the couple's home for very, very close, immediate family and friends. And the theme was holiday chic. The next day, we had a kind of ski chalet inspired welcome party where we took the ballroom of the Ritz Carlton Lake Tahoe and we turned it into just the most luxurious skiing experience that you would ever want to have. We had gondolas, we had beautiful furniture, and we wanted people to imagine that they were doing this, you know, upscale cocktail party in a skiing environment. The next day was their black tie wedding, and then certain people were doing a brunch the day after that. And so what we did was we gave an itinerary and we said, okay, holiday festive for us specifically means upscale cocktail attire. It means we would like the women to dress in holiday shades. So holiday shades meant green, blue, red, gold, and metallics. It meant that for the men, we wanted them in sports coats or beautiful vests with button down shirts. We wanted everyone to have kind of just a little bit more spirit of the holiday season. We encouraged people to wear, you know, glittering jewelry and snowflakes and things like that. And so I actually wrote out, this is what holiday chic means. And then to give people, because I just don't think that people understand words as well as they used to, to give them another layer of information, I went online, I went on Pinterest, I went on Google, I went on Instagram, and I pulled images that I felt were going to align with the couple's vision. And I made a collage. And I took this collage with the description and I put it on the couple's website. The same thing for when we did our kind of, you know, chic chalet vibe. For this, we wanted to lean into winter. We were looking for things like beautiful jumpsuits for women that had a warmer fabrication. So touches of fur, touches of velvet. We were looking for something that gave you the feeling almost of being outside and we wanted it to be very neutral. And so we were pulling things that had really warm, rich, browns, caramel colors. We were looking at, yes, of course, always black, but we were also looking for winter whites, things that would evoke the feeling of snow and of being in a chalet environment. And then for the black tie wedding, it was very important to my couple that everyone wore black, not just black tie, but that there wasn't any color in the guests. And this is because when we did their photos, we wanted to make sure that number one, my bride stood out amongst everybody in her beautiful white fashion story. But also we wanted a level of consistency. We wanted the outfits and the attire to be upscale, to be luxurious, but we didn't want one or two people standing out with any extreme pops of color. So nothing like a gold lame or a red or a green. We were very specific in saying black tie for men means only a tuxedo, not a black suit, nothing like that. Men must be in tuxedos. And for women, we don't want any short dresses. We are only looking for long floor length dresses. And it's okay if it's a slim silhouette, it's okay if it's a mermaid, it's okay if it's a ball gown, but it's really a long silhouette only in black. And so again, I went to the internet, I pulled images that really gave people an idea of this is what we mean when we say black tie for this event. And I put together a collage and I put it on the wedding website. If you are going to be hosting any event that has any type of dress code, especially if it's an alternative dress code, 
It is such a gift to be able to give your family and your friends a visual guideline. So please go ahead, collect the images, make the collage and make it available. I've even had couples posted on their social of, you know, wedding day countdown in 30 days, we'll be doing this. Make sure you're dressed like this. And as always, make sure that your wedding planner is available to your friends and family so that when they do have questions and they will always have questions, there's somebody that they can reach out to other than you to get some guidance and to get some answers. I hope today's video demystified kind of the wedding wear and the fashion rules that are out there right now. I hope that you were able to learn something and that you were able to communicate this to your guests. If you did, please go ahead, hit the subscribe button so that we can share more information with you on a weekly basis. And no matter what you do, do not forget to go into the link below and check out Ana Luisa's jewelry collection. Like I said, I've been wearing it for years. I've actually worn my hoops to weddings. I've worn this ring on stage. I've worn them out and about. Um, it's just, it's such a fantastic brand. Very, very high quality. They have an exceptional return and exchange policy. I will tell you that you will never regret it. If you have questions about fashion stories or anything else, please go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. I will try to answer everyone at all times. And if there's another topic you want me to cover, let me know in the comments and I will make sure to get that up for you. Until then, my friends, I am Andrea Epolito, celebrating life luxury and above all else love. We'll talk again soon.